Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Kingdoms. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a great day. Uh, we're actually in an old backup of the world right now, uh, because I want to see how the new Minecraft textures are going to work with my resource pack. So, as many of you know, uh, Minecraft has... Uh, they're coming out with new textures. I did a... If you didn't see yesterday's Hermitcraft video, um, I suggest you... Check that out where I look at it in a lot more detail if you're interested in doing so. Um, but, as someone who has a resource pack that I made myself, I'm interested to see how the new textures are going to blend with the old ones. So I kind of want to like peek around the old world a little bit and just kind of see. We're not going to do this for the entire video or anything like that, but I just kind of want to get an idea of if I'm going to have to go and modify a bunch of the textures that I have already modified to make them seem um, like they belong, I guess you would say. Like, for example, we've got the new plank textures, which is kind of smooth and beveled, and then we have the old logs, which is, this is my own custom texture. So the way I have this set up is I've got my texture pack on top, Anything my texture pack doesn't change will be the new updated texture. So I'm probably going to have to go in and uh, modify the logs, it looks like. That's probably going to have to be done. Um, hmm. Some of the things I do really like here. Like, here's my cobble next to the old, or the uh, next to the new cobble. Eh, it actually fits pretty well. Yeah, most of this stuff looks perfectly fine. The logs, I think I'll definitely have to go and update uh, to fit with the new style. And ultimately, I think I am going to have to uh, switch over to these new textures once uh, once that becomes a thing. You know what? Since we're in a backup, let's just go game mode three. And we'll just kind of fly around a little bit. Just try and see what we're looking at here. Spruce leaves are changed. All this stuff has changed. But this is the stuff that I'm really interested in. Ooh, I don't like how the bone blocks add stripes to your buildings now. Those stripes were not there before. Or maybe they were, but they were much less defined. Now my bu uh, my buildings look like they have pinstripes. <laughs> that, that's not really a good look. Um, hmm. Okay. The planks look fine, though, for the roofs. Once again, the logs are going to have to be updated. The, the the wheat looks so much better. But this is the stuff that I'm really interested in over here. With the uh, the new slabs and the uh, the uh, all the new textures compared with the old ones. So, like, this birch, for example. This does not fit <laughs> with the uh, other planks. So I'm going to have to update that. Oh, man, there's going to be a lot more texture pack work ahead of me, it appears. That's okay, though. I don't mind doing it. Uh, it's kind of fun, actually. Um, it's a little a little tedious, but it, it can be enjoyable at the same time. Let's come over here and look at uh, Woodsong. I didn't change any of these textures. Uh, but, yeah, see, here's a perfect example. You got the spruce texture, right? Which is this nice kind of rounded and almost beveled smoothed uh, version of the wood, and then you have the dark oak, which I've changed and tweaked a little bit, and it looks uh, kind of out of place. So I'm going to have to go and uh, update some of these woods and things like that. That all looks okay. Honestly, I think the, uh, the granite is probably fine, which means the diorite is going to be fine as well. This looks okay. The gravel has a little bit more kind of a purple to it now almost. But I don't think it looks bad. I don't think it looks bad. Um, let's... Eh, actually, that looks alright. Uh, this is an older version of the texture pack. So that is a thing. But this actually looks fine. Let's swing over... They changed the mushroom? Yeah, they changed the mushroom blocks. They got rid of, like, the footprints in them. They used to look, uh, the brown mushroom blocks looked, uh, used to kind of look like they had footprints. Uh, which was actually great for making, like, pathways, but... 
That's not a thing anymore. This all looks okay. The fences, uh, the uh, signs actually match the uh, oak planks a little bit better now, so that's kind of nice. And then over here, I think most of these textures have been changed by me. Almost all the textures you see here in Regnum have been updated. So yeah, this is mostly going to be... Hmm. I think uh, this doesn't look like bad though. It's not bad. I'll, I'll basically just have to go in and remake a lot of the textures to kind of match the new... Uh, not so much the the colors, but the uh, like the, the smoothing and the, the bevel of it, if that makes any sense. Most of this looks fine though. So I think my texture pack, like it's gonna need some tweaks and some updates, but I think for the most part, it will still be okay. It's just gonna be little things like the planks and uh, some things I'm gonna have to do basically for consistency's sake. But I think we'll be okay. I don't think we're gonna have to, uh, I don't think I'm gonna have to do like too much. There's certainly going to be some stuff that needs doing, but uh, it could be worse. It could be a lot worse, actually. Um, I think I think I'm okay with this. Yeah, this will be this will be fine. Most of this seems good. All right, so uh, let me jump over into the actual Kingdoms world now that we've kind of had a peek around, and I'll be back with you in just a minute. All right, guys, we are back in the actual world, <laughs> and uh, it's all good. So, uh, yeah, looking at those textures, there's going to be some things that we have to change and some things we have to deal with. But I think overall it's going to be fine. Um, and I, I am going to have to update to the new textures because the thing is, uh, all the future updates for Minecraft are going to have new blocks and things like that in the style of the new textures. So it, it, it's something that's going to have to be done. Um, because this is, you know, the forever world, so to speak. So if I ever want to play in updates past 1.12, um, or maybe 1.13, it's, it's going to have to be done. Uh, there's, there's no way around it unless I want to remake every single texture for every new block. And that's just not, uh, that's more of a headache than I want to deal with. Uh, but today I would like to get some building done. So let's grab some stone bricks here. And I kind of want to try making another little house but I want it to be smaller like smaller dimensions but taller I want to try going up at a higher angle and maybe connecting some other stuff to it as well so let's kind of uh, let's grab I'm gonna need more blocks than this this is not gonna be enough uh, let's go where's all my stone oh here it is I was gonna say I could have sworn I had a shulker box Ooh, I'm actually lower on stone than I thought but it's going to be fine. Uh, let's go and make some more stone brick. So let's kind of lay something out here. What I'm thinking is this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is 13 blocks, which I think is a little too big for kind of some of the things that I want to do. Uh, so let's try maybe like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Let's try maybe like a like a seven by seven, right? So this will be a little bit smaller. And then maybe we'll kind of bring a little bit out kind of to the side like this. Something kind of this shape, I think, could work. Um, and it will end up being a little bit taller, but I think that'll be okay. Let's go and make some stone brick stairs. There we go. Did I have any by any chance? I had a couple. Okay. This is, this is okay. So we'll do something like this. And then I think maybe we'll go like so. So this will still give it like an 11. Well, that'd still be like an 11 by 11 base. I think that's still a little bit too big. Let's maybe go like here. Right. And we'll kind of bring this back around. And do a little something like this. We'll fix the terrain and stuff underneath, you know, in a little bit. But I'm not going to worry about it too much right this second. And then we need to curve it like so. 
And then right here, uh, actually, yeah, right here, it's gonna go up into a full, like, a more of a box, rather than this kind of higher thing. So then I'm thinking, like, right here, we'll go up a full block, and then bring it in again with the, uh, stairs, right? So we're basically making, like, a taller pyramid is the idea. So we'll still have kind of a pyramid feel to it, but it's just going to be a bit taller. And therefore, because it's taller, it'll be thinner as well. Um, hmm. The problem with that, though, is that if we want this part to be functional, ah, that might not work as well as I'd been hoping. Hmm, okay. Trial and error. Because <laughs> the thing is, I want to have this kind of mini ziggurat style for all of the buildings and homes and things like that, but I don't want it to just be that. I want to, you know, it's variations on a theme. We don't want to just have these, like, mini ziggurats and just have a repeated ziggurat over and over and over and over and over again. We want to change it up a little bit. So I think we need to kind of mess with this and experiment a little bit and see what we can kind of come up with that builds upon the theme and adds some interest, but still kind of maintains the the style as well. And that can be the challenge here, especially when you're kind of just starting a new area and everything's like a little bit funky. Like it can be kind of kind of challenging to do that. So let's go back to stone bricks here. And we'll kind of bring that out. And then, he, oop, that was a misplaced blocked. Well, let's bring this out like so, right? And we'll go boop, 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 and back around like that. We want to build this up probably one, two, probably four high should be good. So we'll kind of bring that over. Let's just kind of mark it out with a little bit of a framework, right? So sort of like this, kind of bring that up as well. Oh, right here, there we go. So we'll kind of mark that out. And then the ziggurat would go up. If we do keep this sort of the normal pyramid, I really don't think the, uh, the larger pyramid shape looked very good. I thought it, uh, to be honest, I think it kind of looked pretty bad. Um, so then here, hmm, this is going to kind of come around. Let's maybe do something like this. Also looks like it's starting to get a little bit late. Oh, man. And then I suppose this one would curve here, right? So if we're going to bring this over, man, I really don't want to make this any bigger than that. But we may not have a whole lot of choice. Just because for the, uh, the pyramid shape, like you need a fairly large base to make it kind of work. Hmm. Because this doesn't look good. This is not an interesting shape. This is an ugly shape. Wow. Not, uh, not a fan, <laughs> if I must say. Um, tell you what, let me play around with this for a little bit. Let me see what I can come up with, and I'll be back with you in just a minute. All right, guys, I am back, and I think I've come up with something that I like here. So uh, we got kind of the same ziggurat style here. And then we've got this little um, tower balcony type thing that kind of sticks over the edge. I think I like it. It, it actually kind of adds some character to the building and helps it stand out a little bit. Uh, and, you know, as I said, it's about variations on a theme. So this might be one example. Maybe we'll incorporate more of these towers uh, throughout the village as we go. Um, different things to kind of take these stylistic elements and, you know, turn them into something 
uh, that is a lot more varied, but also kind of cohesive at the same time. So I think this is good. Uh, the interior's, you know, not nothing much. It's just still grass and stuff in here, but I think this works. So you've got like the little entrance here. There's a little tower up above or a balcony, depending on how you want to look at it. The, the, uh, the roofs on these two towers are at a different height, which adds a little bit of height variation. I think that's good. Uh, I use some chiseled stone brick here, uh, just for the, for the like corners of the towers to make them kind of stand out a little bit. I think that's good as well. Like overall, I'm really happy with this. I think this is a, this is a good start when it comes to taking this idea and kind of expanding on it, uh, which is what we're going to be doing here over the course of the next, well, however many episodes we're working on this village, I guess. Um, I do want to jump into the comment or question of the day, because uh, I have some land that needs to be cleared over here. And uh, this is a comment that uh, could warrant uh, quite a lot of talking. So uh, I, I want to kind of jump into this while I'm working on the land a little bit. Um, let's kind of, uh, well, you know what, let's jump into the comment and then I can clear my inventory. So today's comment is from Unseen928. And they say, hey, Wells, I plan on becoming a YouTuber, but I have no idea how to start. Like, what kind of equipment, environment, time frame do I need, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that is a loaded question. <laughs> there's uh, there's really no, like, set num uh, There's no set rules over what you need to start YouTube as far as, like, uh, equipment and stuff like that. I mean, like... I, for example, I started on, uh, I had a gaming PC when I started, but it wasn't really a high end. It, it was a couple years old at the time. It was kind of a low, it was like an entry level gaming PC, uh, that I had a friend build for me. Um, and it was, it was never top of the line, even when it was brand new. But the idea was that it was kind of a budget gaming PC. So it was enough to play games, but not enough to play, like, ridiculous games at the max setting or anything like that. And as far as, like, other stuff, I used, um, what was the name of that software? Loilo Game Recorder, I think, was the, the name of the recording software that I used when I first started. It's free. It was a free recording software. Actually works pretty well. Uh, doesn't have a watermark or anything like that. Um, OBS is also a, a, probably a better option nowadays um also free as far as a microphone when i first started i think i was rocking a uh webcam <laughs> nothing fancy uh and that was pretty much it and i just kind of recorded in my bedroom uh, on my desk but the thing is the beautiful thing about youtube is that you don't have to you don't have to have like a professional setup or anything like that uh Honestly, ever, but especially when you're first starting. Because, to be honest, when you first start YouTube, your early videos are going to be terrible. That's just the way it is. <laughs> it takes time to develop the experience and, uh, you know, the, all the skills and stuff needed to make what people would consider to be high-quality videos as far as, like, uh, your audio quality and your editing and all that kind of stuff. It takes time to develop those skills. It's not something that just happens. Uh, not to mention, it takes a lot of time to kind of develop yourself as an entertainer and as a, a content creator. Uh, because when you first start, your commentary is just going to be super awkward. It's going to feel really forced. It's going to be very awkward. And that's just the reality of the situation. If you go back and you look at my early videos, uh, they're, they're pretty bad by today's standards. Uh, you know, I look back at them and I, I can't even watch them. I just cringe. Uh, whenever I go back, I'm like, wow, I can't believe I said that, or I can't believe I've tried to do that, or, I mean, even, even, like, the, the builds, the builds were like, wow, I, I look, would look back at that stuff now and be like, man, that's an ugly house, <laughs> you know, and it's just a matter of practice, you know, the saying is practice makes perfect, and it's very true, uh, just like you, you know, YouTube and, and anything else, so the most important part of your, uh, setup, air quotes, when it comes to being a YouTuber, is yourself, and it's your ability to uh, be confident and to be entertaining or or informative. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be hilariously funny or 
uh, extremely energetic. I mean, I, I have moments of levity in my videos where I crack a joke or something, but I wouldn't consider myself to be a incredibly funny person. Uh, but I think my videos are more informative and kind of laid back than uh, than some other people. And that's, you know, everyone kind of has their own style. It's important to remember that YouTube is a very big place and has a very large audience. And pretty much no matter what type of content you want to make, uh, there's going to be someone who's interested in watching it. Not everyone who likes uh, Minecraft videos would like my videos. Uh, some people aren't interested in the type of content that I make, and that's okay. Uh, that's just, you know, on the other hand, there's plenty of people out there who are interested in that. So I would say don't try to copy other people and, and, don't, and don't, don't try to be a different YouTuber. Um, you know, certainly take inspiration, certainly take, uh, take cues and ideas from other people without a doubt. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, in a lot of ways, my content is modeled after uh, B00. There's, like, there's a lot of different other YouTubers that kind of have an influence on my content. B00's in there. There's a little bit of Corrales in me. There's a little bit of Northern Lion. There's a little bit of, you know, all these different YouTubers that I watch and enjoy. Uh, many of them to this day have kind of been an influence on my style of commentary and video and all that other kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you develop over time. But as far as equipment goes, uh, when you're first starting out, go with whatever you can afford. <laughs> you know, go with whatever you have on hand. Uh, you don't need to have like a, a thousands of dollars uh, recording setup to start YouTube, uh, especially when you're first starting. I mean, realistically, it's going to take quite a while to even build an audience. Um, you know, I mean, the the first videos you make are going to be pretty bad, uh, and you will look back someday, and you will look at them, and you will say those were bad. Um, but it's a matter of just kind of getting better over time and, and practicing, and uh, eventually you get to a point where, you know, you are, you you make content that you look at, and you're like, that ah, that's pretty good. Um, and it, and you you will have a great sense of pride when you upload your first couple of videos. It's gonna happen. You're gonna look at them and you'll be like, "Wow, I made this. This is great." And then you'll look back at them years later and you'll say, "This is terrible. I can't believe I made this. Kill it with fire." Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, I mean, as far as like budget stuff, I would say the first thing to invest in uh, is a decent microphone. Um, it doesn't have to be, you don't need like a, a super nice studio microphone or anything like that, but just something that's better than like a webcam or a, or a built-in microphone in a computer or like a headset. I'd say invest in a microphone first off. There's, uh, there's plenty of good options out there for like $50 or less. Uh, you can get like a, I don't know, like I think my, my first real quote unquote microphone was a, a CAD U37. It's about $45 on Amazon, uh, US, if you're in the United States. I don't know what it is. And you know, in Australia, that means it's probably like, you know, $135.26 or something like that. Um, <laughs> but a decent microphone is probably the first thing to invest in, uh, assuming you have a computer that can actually, you know, run games. Um, and then from there, probably editing software would be the next thing. Uh, something like, I don't know, Sony Movie Studio, Adobe Premiere Elements, something like that. If you're a, if you're a college student, you can get uh, Adobe Creative Cloud for relatively cheap. Uh, it's like 20 bucks a month and you get the full Adobe suite of uh, different programs. So Photoshop and Premiere and all this other kind of stuff. That's what I use personally. Uh, is Premiere Pro for editing, but, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with starting out on, like, Windows Movie Maker. I think there's this kind of misconception among people that when you, if you, if you want to be a successful YouTuber, uh, you need to have an incredibly amazing professional setup that costs you thousands of dollars, and that's just not true. Uh, you know, start with whatever you got, because the, it, I mean, basically, when it comes to your setup, the only thing that you can't upgrade at any time is yourself. Uh, assuming you have the money to do it, uh, you can upgrade your computer whenever you want. You can buy a new microphone, you can buy a new uh, computer, you can buy a new editing software. The only thing you're limited there by is, is money. Whereas, it doesn't matter how much money you have, it takes months and e even years to develop yourself as an entertainer and as a content creator. And I think that's the most important thing. So, 
you know, I'd say just start. Start with whatever you got lying around. Uh, you know, make small upgrades here and there. I probably have at this point, uh, thanks to Patreon, thanks to ad revenue, thanks to all the different uh, sources of income that YouTube has given me, and, and especially thanks to, like, Patreon and stuff, you know, I probably have several thousand dollars at this point into all the different equipment and software and stuff like that that I use for YouTube. But that's not something that I did overnight. That's not something that I did in one go. You know, I didn't just wake up one morning and decide I'm going to spend several thousand dollars on uh, stuff for YouTube and then I can be a famous YouTuber. Like that's not uh, that's not what you know, it, it wasn't like that at all. Instead, it was, you know, $50 here for a microphone and then uh, $100 here for a, a capture card or, a, you know, maybe $100 on acoustic foam for my walls and stuff. Oh, also, that reminds me, uh, this person asked about uh, environment. You just need an environment that's relatively quiet and have carpeting. <laughs> you need a room with carpeting, even if it's just like a rug that you throw down but something to reduce like the echo. Um, because if you're in like a room that has like a hardwood or a tile floor uh, and no blankets or anything like that on the walls, um, no acoustic treatment of any kind, your audio is gonna be very, very echoey and it's gonna sound really bad. So you'll at least wanna have a room that's carpeted. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as environment. You know, there's lots of ways to do stuff on a budget. Um, I mean, realistically, you could have a, a setup for YouTube that is acceptable for less than $100 easily. Uh, and the majority of that is going to be your microphone and your editing software. <laughs> Those are the two most expensive things when you're first starting out, without a doubt. Uh, the microphone, probably 50 bucks for like a... Uh, don't don't get a blue snowball or a blue yeti. Everybody gets a blue snowball and a blue yeti, and they're actually kind of terrible microphones for the money. Uh, you can do much better for the same price. Um, they're not bad microphones. They're just bad microphones for what they cost. I guess would be the way to say it, because you're paying way way more just to have the blue brand on it. Uh, and so many people are misinformed about microphones that they're like, oh well, YouTuber so and so has a blue yeti, and they say it's good, so. They, it means it must be good. And then that person gets a Blue Yeti and people ask them, what microphone do you use? And they say, I use a Blue Yeti. And it's, it's this whole thing. I could rant about Blue for a while, but um, what I would say is just, you know, look at budgets. Do your research. Make sure you do, do your research. Don't buy anything on an impulse. Do your research into programs and equipment and all this other kind of stuff. Do your research on how to uh, do things for, you know, kind of... Um, what's the, what's the term? Jerry? Is it Jerry rig? <laughs> Where you, you know, kind of have like a, a do it yourself set up. Like for example, uh, when it comes to acoustic treatment for a long time, I had egg cartons hanging on my walls. It didn't look pretty, but it got the job done. Got rid of that echo that was plaguing my videos until I put up the, uh, the egg cartons. You know, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of things you can do on a, on a budget to make things uh, at least acceptable. Keep in mind, YouTube is not a, uh, this, YouTube is not like, uh, the type of place where you need to have something that looks like it was pumped out by, you know, box movie studios or something. You don't need something that looks truly professional, especially when you're first starting. Um, uh, but you really, you just need it to be not, you just need your quality to be not bad enough <laughs> that it turns people away. Uh, you know, and if you if people watch the first couple minutes of your video and your your microphone sounds like there's a F-16 touching down in your backyard, uh, you're probably going to have uh, a little bit more of a struggle to grow. But as I said, it's all a learning process anyway. The first six months, you really shouldn't even be worried about it. You should just be worried about uh, like focusing on making your content better and becoming more confident and entertaining uh, or, or informative or, or whatever. Just be a, you know. Focus on commentary, because that's probably the hardest part uh, and the part that takes the longest to develop an upgrade. So, yeah, there's uh, there's my two cents. If you have uh, more specific questions, shoot me a, a, shoot me a tweet on Twitter. Um, I'm generally happy to answer those types of things, uh, especially if they're like short and to the point. A quick question. What microphone should I get? Something like that. Um, yeah, good stuff. But anyway, 
I ranted about that for a while, and I know uh, some people probably tuned out because they don't really care and have <laughs> and don't have any desire to be a YouTuber. But it's kind of fun to talk about uh, those types of things every now and again. Talk shop, uh, as as I've always called it. Um, but guys, that is going to do it, I think, for today's episode. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Link's in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.